the rest of the setup um, involves editing the visit reasons. So each time you meet with a student, you're going to have the uh, you're going to need to decide a reason for that visit. So here, these reasons here are aligned with the Ask a National model. You can you can use them as is. You can add to them, or you can remove any of these um, that you like. So if you'd like to, if you don't like one of the reason codes that I've put in here, simply highlight it. Like you don't, let's say you don't like this uh, referral. Just highlight it and click Remove Selected, and it's gone. If you want to add a new reason, simply type it in here and click the Add New Reason, and it will appear here in your list. If you want to change the order of these, you can do that by using these little buttons here to move anything up and down. Okay, so this is fully customizable. You can um, edit this to your heart's content. Okay. The next item that we have to uh, take a look at is the counselor reason. So this is to keep track of um, the time that you spend not with students. Uh, in the Ask a National model, this is largely under the system support activities, some individual student planning, school guidance curriculum and this responsive service of peer facilitation. So again, just like the other reason list, this is fully customizable. You can add, edit, delete anything you like um, with this list a and you do it in the same way as you do in the other form. Okay. If you have any groups that you meet with regularly, um, you're going to want to create some groups. So the way that we do that is that we choose some students that are on our caseload. We give our group a name. We'll say that they meet for lunch and then we just say create new group. And that's all there is to it. If you have a group that you've met with for a while and they don't meet anymore and you want to get rid of them, you would just highlight it and click remove the group. Okay. Um, we're going to, however, create the lunch group again so I can show you this. If uh, you have somebody who comes into your group that's new or somebody who leaves, you can edit or remove the group members here by using this interface. So once we click on the group, it tells us who's in it. So we can remove a student from the group here or we can add a student to the group from here. And again, I only have two students in my list, but uh, you'll have more. So. Okay, and the last thing that you might want to do is set a password. So here, um, this will create a password for you that will not allow you to open the file unless this password is entered. So uh, I think that this is a good idea for you to do to make sure that your data are, are stored safely. Um, you might also want to keep a copy of this file on something that you can carry with you, uh, such as a, a USB flash drive or a thumb drive. And if you save the file there, uh, it will prevent people from having direct access to your to your file. Okay, so all we need to do then is set the password, and it's set. So next time we close this file, we'll need to put that password in to reopen it. Okay, and there the password is set. Okay. Um, here, this uh, other things that we can do, add, edit, or remove group members. And this is just another way of bringing up that interface that allows us to add, edit, or remove group members. Okay, we already saw that. Um, and some options that we have. Here, we have the option to show all sheets. I would recommend that you use this carefully if you choose to use it. Okay, what this does is this shows you all of your data that are stored in the time tracker. So if you if you had recorded some time keeping track of the time that you don't spend with students, that would be in this sheet. All of your reasons are listed here. Your group is listed here. If we had any data recorded, it would all be stored in this sheet. Our reason list is stored here and our student names again are right here. Okay, so again, just choose to use that, use that carefully. Okay, other options that we have, we can export this, export our data once we've collected some to a file 
that can be used and hopefully merged with student outcome data. So what it, what it would do is it would create um, a summary basically for each student in your that, that you've met with and summarize all of their information on one row of data. So um, that's useful for analyzing and, and making sense of it later if you need to do it outside of the time tracker not using one of the reports. Uh, you can also import another easy analyze time tracker file here if you like. If you didn't do it when you first opened the work workbook you can always come back here and do it later. Okay. Uh, the last thing that I'll show you here is there's some quick facts here down on the bottom that just tells you some quick things about your data. We have uh, the number of student contacts to date, number of student contacts today, how many students did you meet with today, and the number of students on your caseload. We also have down here the backup location. And the backup location, what happens is when we close the file, um, it will will create a backup copy of it and it creates that backup copy in this location and that we we do that just so that if something should happen to your data um, at least there's a a backup of the most recent work that you did kept here okay and then we also have a little another fun fact here is you can click on this to see the student that you met with the most frequently